Vlahovic, chairperson of the Women's International Network, High Commissioner, South Africa, Madam High Commissioner, Dr. Priya Ranjan Trilady, Chancellor of the Global Open University, distinguished member of the Legislative Assembly of Delhi, who was a currency, belongs to my constituency. Distinguished awardees, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. At the very outset, I would like to salute the Universal Humanity awardees, our unsung heroes in the media. <laughs> the media so conveniently forgets to protect on their shows. I applaud your humanitarian community services and extend my best wishes for many more years of your purposeful and noble service to humanity. On this fifth World Humanitarian Day, we also recognize those who face danger and adversity in order to save lives, alleviate suffering, and help maintain human dignity. We also pay our homage to those brave hearts who have laid their lives in helping lives in helping the suffering and most vulnerable people around the world. Yes, we accept in our hearts that moral courage is more difficult to muster than physical courage or strength. But in our day-to-day -day lives, we forget that. Ernest Hemingway once uh, in favor of arms, very bitterly said, and I quote, Few men are willing to brave the disapproval of their fellows, the censure of their colleagues, and the wrath of their society. Moral courage is a rare commodity than bravery in battle or great intelligence. Yet it is the one essential vital quality of those who seek to change the world which yields more painfully to change. Close quote. I am thus heartened to learn of the wonderful work, the daunting work of the awardees. Once again, my congratulations to all the awardees. Undoubtedly, the need for humanitarian services the world over is immense. That's that is erupted worldwide, as in Syria, in Egypt, and Turkey, to name just a few. We constantly hear of the killings uh, that are going on in various parts of the Middle East, uh, particularly in Iraq, there is not a day that passes that somebody or the other doesn't succumb to violence. Uh, the provision of humanitarian assistance takes place in a variety of settings, under occupation, in international and internal armed conflicts, and in the event of natural or man-made disasters. Humanitarian needs are often extensive as our challenges in delivering assistance. International legal frameworks for humanitarian action not only provides guidance on how to address such situations, but can also serve as powerful tools in advocating for and achieving the protection of affected civilian populations. For instance, negotiations and arguments for access to people can be strengthened by reference to specific legal obligations of the parties to the armed conflict to permit access. The IHL frameworks compromise different each branches of international law wherein the humanitarian principles of humanity and impartiality are combined to establish legal frameworks for protection of human rights and rendering assistance. There are other imminent needs of humanitarian assistance too, arising from natural calamities like severe weather incidents that have proliferated in recent times due to climate change and rampant disregard of the ecological considerations like we witnessed at the time recently at Inukra and because of a flash flood and the associated landslides that resulted uh, with regarding cyclones that we read about in the east coast of North America and many other natural calamities that have occurred around the world. So no amount of humanitarian aid can be enough. And of course humanitarian aid is essentially 
God and those who serve uh, humanitarian aid are essentially neutral to the issues. They are neutral because they don't take sides, they only look at the suffering of the victim in whatever circumstances he or she may be in and extend humanitarian help and aid to those who are suffering. And I think that's really at the heart of the movement for humanitarian aid. Uh, we can't be seen to be taking sides in a conflict. Uh, we can't be looking at opinions and making uh, and rendering opinions in respect of any event, uh, which is either man-made or the result of our conflict. We look at the victims of the conflict on either side, and in fact on both sides, and then uh, seek the indulgence of those who are part of that conflict uh, and request that we be allowed access uh, to those who are suffering so that we can help them uh, again, uh, regain themselves in whatever manner that they can uh, in the context of the situation that we find ourselves in in the campaign. People and companies will have the opportunity to sponsor a work and then each time some a contribution or a donation as the case may be. I would thus like to urge my friends from the corporate sector present here to come forward to sponsor their corporate phase or jingle to the UN campaign. I'm also heartened to see women cultivating a society, especially of women, engaged, informed and compassionate, who have shared a goal of alleviating human suffering and promoting well-being of the most vulnerable. And I see in this movement uh, women playing a very central role. The women, uh, in a sense, are both the victims of suffering around the world in various situations. But, in, but, but are also those who extend a helping hand to those who are suffering.